Welcome to the Whitehall Avenue SDA Weekly Festival Voice. It is that time when the publishing department invites you to acknowledge the beginning of our Father's call to come rest and worship as he renews our mind and body. I invite you to pray with me. Our God and our Father, we are so grateful for these opportunities where we can share. As we come, Lord, I pray for your divine presence and leading. I pray for your inspiration and, of course, your blessing as we worship you this evening, as, we, as I give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's reading is taken from the book of Christian Leadership. Walk humbly before him. Take unto you the whole armor of God and never forget the gospel shoes of peace. Go not to any man with a heavy trend or with anger in your voice. Let all God's servants from those occupying the highest positions to those in the lowest service. Walk humble before him. A time for prayer. Be sure to pray and counsel together before the laying your plans and then in spirit of Christ, push the work unitedly. If one of you, if one of your number decides that he cannot cooperate with his brethren and has no desire to work because of difference of opinion. The course to be pursued is without a question. Humble yourself before God and resort to prayer, for you cannot and must not attempt to work at variance. From any one who praises in stubbornness and self-will, God will remove his spirit and another will wear the crown that was for him. God accepts only those who will learn of Christ. Those who study his word, learning lessons of meekness, and lowliness of heart, lessons of obedience, willingness to do his work in God's way, not their finite way. Rather, love of self, pride and self-sufficiency lies at the foundation of the greatest trials and discords that have ever existed in the religious world. Again and again, the angel has said to me, press together, press together, be of one mind, of one judgment. Christ is the leader and you are bridging. Follow him. Walk in the light as he is the light. Those who walk in the footsteps of Christ shall not walk in darkness. For those who draw apart in unsanctified independence cannot have God's presence and blessing in the work. Workers can easily place themselves where divine love and power and wisdom cannot reach them. Where they cannot have help in counsel, in difficulties and trials, because they could not understand and rightly appreciate heaven's rich treasure. They would glorify themselves and think they, their own ways perfect and become established in self-righteousness. Wisdom from above. Men are wanted who feel their need of wisdom from above. 
men who are converted at heart, who understand that they are but sinful mortals and must learn their lessons in the school of Christ before they are prepared to mold other minds. When men have learned to depend on God, when they have faith that works by love and purify their own souls, then they will not lay on other men's shoulders burdens that are grievous to be borne. God exalts the humble. He is most fit to carry responsibilities and command who most resembles God in character, in goodness, mercy, and staunch loyalty to the cause and work of God. Everyone needs now to work for brother, for friend, for neighbor, and for stranger, drawing the mind away from the discouragements that will crown in. The truth is to be magnified. We must not be surprised at strange movements. No one must seek exaltation. The more humble we move and work, the more will we be exalted with God. The return of Jesus Christ to our world will not be long delayed. This is to be the keynote of every message. Time for change. There is much for men in responsible positions to learn. When men feel that their ideas are without a flaw, it is time for them to change their position from president to that of a learner. When they think that their ideas, their judgment should be accepted without question, they show that they are unfit for their position. God sees not as men sees. Whatever position a man may be called to fill, his judgment is not to be regarded as unherring. His entrusted responsibility makes it far more needful than it otherwise would be for him to be free from all egotism and willing to receive counsel. Exhorting men's rather means to be used in God's cause. Has there be, been any of this rejoicing among those who have been given positions of responsibility in the work of God? It is a shame to them. And when they see what an offense their course was to God, they will be filled with shame. The anger of the Lord is kindled against those who can rejoice in the robbery of their fellow men. Who exalt means to be used for the advantage of the cause. The Lord asks, who gave these men his authority? The cause of God was dearer to the ones they were robbing than it was to them. They exercised their ingenuity, a precious talent entrusted to them by God to be used to glorify him, to make it as hard as possible for those who were earnestly and sincerely seeking to do the will of God. In this they manifest the attributes of Satan. Person does not give holiness. Solomon was never so rich or so wise or so truly great as when he confessed, I am but a little child. 
I know not how to go out or come in. Those who today occupy positions of trust should seek to learn the lesson taught by Solomon's Spur. The higher the position a man occupies, the greater the responsibility that he has to bear, the wider will be the influence that he ex exerts and the greater is need of dependence of God. Ever should he remember that with the call to work comes the call to walk circumspectly before his fellow men. He is to stand before God in the attitude of a learner. Position does not give holiness of character. It is by honoring God and obeying his commands that a man is made truly great. So long as he remains consecrated, the man who God has endowed with discernment and ability will not manifest an eagerness for high position. Neither will he seek to rule or control. Of necessity, of necessity men must bear responsibilities. But instead of striving for the supremacy, he who is a true leader will pray for an understanding heart to discern between good and evil. Leaders are learners. Those who accept a position of responsibility in the cause of God should always remember that with the call to his work, God has also called them to work circumspectly before him and before their fellow men. Instead of considering it their duty to order and dictate and command, they should realize that they are to be learners themselves. When a responsible worker fails to learn his lesson, the sooner he is released from his responsibilities, the better it will be for him and for the work of God. Position never will give holiness and excellence of character. He who honors God, keep his commandment, is, is himself honored. The question which each should ask himself in all humility is, um, am I qualified for this position? Have I learned to keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment? The Savior's earthly example has been given us that we should not walk in our own strength, but that each should consider himself as Solomon expressed it, a little child. Prominent characters, special target for Satan. David knew that it would require humility of heart, a constant trust in God, and unceasing watchfulness to withstand the temptations that would surely beset Solomon in his exalted station. For such prominent characters are a special mark for the shaft of Satan. Cultivate humble dependence. Men whom the Lord calls to important positions in his work are to cultivate a humble dependence upon him. They are not to seek to embrace too much authority, for God has called them to work of ruling, but, but to plan and counsel with their fellow 
laborers, every worker alike, is to hold himself amenable to the requirements and instructions of God. This brings us to the end of this week Vespa Voice reading. God edges of the Sabbath family and see you in the sanctuary. God bless you. Thank you.